I like to recall the finances order, and I just want to where we left off last Friday. Friday. They they two items. items. Uh, uh, we need to keep in discussion. And flow with the garden garden area, make your best program. What's the pick up? Global 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 and also the um, the revenue line of the delinquent um, violation fee in terms of increasing the revenue. When we left off uh, last Friday, uh, in terms of uh, there are two two um, two recommendations, so you should have one um, one was updated um, late Friday by uh, Derek. So you should have that um, that version and this version here, just showing the uh, adjustment to um, salary line. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, may I just like not have coverage? Sam, can we uh, make coverage just? Um, this, this one here, yeah, you did. Good. 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 So that one, this copy here should have six uh, items. And then this one here is the first recommendation that we got through Friday, and the entire council is in agreement for this one here. This one here we did at, uh, at the recommend, uh, change it to what was uh, recommended. And five council members are in agreement. Party as we hold this until we can continue discussion into Monday on the youth program line. And here we are in terms of um, discussing that, discussing the um, the revenue on the delinquent um, parking violation. And then there's one item I want to add in terms of the mayor's um, salary increase. And to discuss that. So we'll, we'll go back and just start a discussion and not go back in detail, but just you know, continue where we left off in terms of the youth service. And the, the hot topic is the funding source. Yeah. Some of us um, is not in agreement in terms of taking that whatever is being recommended out of the general reserve. And we're asking to hold that and wait until the ARPA reallocation and to then look at that at that point in time. So the recommendation that was on the table by majority was to keep it at 150 as is, and then revisit it. So I'm open for discussion on that. Okay. Well, being that that was my recommendation, uh, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, so, I, so I would think that. So I think that the council is seems to be in agreement around increasing that on the youth budget line. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. the topic of the discussion is whether it comes out of the general fund or we wait until we retrieve some of the ARPA money and, and go that route. And I'm reluctantly okay with the latter, I guess what I would need from the council, from each member of the council, would be that we could agree that the first $150,000 of ARPA funds that that um, comes back into the city, um, we would uh, that would be the first use of it. Um, and I guess if I could get that um, commitment from council members, then I would feel more comfortable. Go ahead, please. Do you mean um, after we take care of four items that already are in our operating budget? Yes, okay. yes, okay. because so yes. Yeah, no, I appreciate that that point of clarity. Yeah, because that's already within our operating budget. So, so yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Yes, as as we have mentioned, mm -hmm. majority of us have mentioned on Friday. I don't think there's any issue funding this line. It's an important line that we need to fund and expand as we go on years to come. So, I think the across the table Friday was there's an agreement to revisit that. 
once the ARPA is back with us on use um, funds. And that should happen in the next couple of weeks. Sure. Yeah. So what I would, again, what I'm saying is just that the first 150 um, should be prioritized for this line. And if that, if I could get the council members to agree to that, then I don't see any reason why I couldn't agree with that. Go ahead, please. Yep, I'm here. Go ahead, please. I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, as I said, we all agree that it's one. I know that you had concerns about now versus then, but I feel an agreement that when that happens, and before the end of the year, um, I would certainly support that. I'm in agreement with it. I'm in agreement with it. I am. I'm on board. As I've stated Friday, I'm on board with it because it's the service that we need to provide and expand. I'm on board for revisiting it. And again, you know I want to add to it. Um, I can't say that I guarantee when, when that money comes back that the first $150,000 can be appropriate to this when maybe we might have an emergency or coming up. I'm in favor of putting that money there, but I, 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 I don't want to say right now that you know I would guarantee that that would happen on my part. So we'll, we'll revisit that at that point in time. So we'll put that on hold until the funding, increase of funding on that line. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, mean, I, just, I appreciate that, Mr. Terrell, actually. I do appreciate it, but you're saying, I just don't want it, you know, I, I hope that, you know, we, we just honor our words here. That's all. So. So we'll have that mark as something to, to look at when we are addressing the unusual sound on that is going to come back to us. The other, I just remember that um, you also mentioned um, the director of development. Um, there was an agreement across um, five of us to increase that to 8%. And then some of the discussion that was sent to Friday was in terms of the, the salary for the director of development against the principal planner. They seem to be close to each other, I think it, you were pointing that out. So do you want to address that? Because that was one of the things that you also wrote. I just remember that. As a, yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Williams, uh, the first thing. Oh, I thought we already clarified it. it was 8% or 5%. Yeah. Mr. Farley had brought up some point. I just yeah. want a clarification on that. So, and I'll try to keep this as brief as I possibly can. Right. Yes, I please. just think that, um, but I have to give some context. I'm of the thought, number one, that if we're going to, as a council, and it seems like we're going to, um, it seems like what we're doing is visit, you know, trying to delve into, you know, what's appropriate to pray for people and what do we think. If we're going to do it, then I think that we need to do it in a more uniform way, which seems like we're talking about the market research happening, which will assist in that. Um, so, but I also just kind of want to say that if we're, how we're getting to the decisions that we're getting thus far, I don't think that it's been, I, I don't think that it's really been um, consistent and or equitable. However, you know, with a commitment to revisit that, um, and I, you know, I could, I could, I could see myself getting there. I think that um, the request was for fifteen percent, and I think that the council members were are saying that they were okay with eight uh, percent, and and then the, for the principal planner, um, it was five percent. I think just a couple things we just need to keep in mind again is that if we're going to do it, I don't even know that's that's something that we should be touching anyway. I think that I, I, it'd probably be better if it was just 3% across the board for everyone until we get this uh, market research done. But being that we're um, having the conversation, I just, I, I think that, you know, that we should honor, at least get closer to uh, what, the, what the request was. And I don't know how much of an impact that would be on the overall budget. It seems to be pretty minimum to be at like a 10% and... Um, I don't know what the original ask was for the, our principal planner, but I hope I also want to make sure that we that there's some daylight, an appropriate amount of a space between their salaries, but considering their uh, uh, 
the service here as well. He is a service. This is why I think it's something that we, it's a, it's a slippery slope that we're on if we're going to do it, but I just want to make sure if we do it, we do it with integrity and, and equitable as we can. And I don't think that that's happened thus far. However, I'd like to see it get up to 10 and 8, and then I'll be good. Mr. Go ahead, please. Um, do we? What was the salary that we landed on then for the planning officer? That's it's on 5%. the updated sheet, uh, 89, oh, it's on 89075, yes. uh, at the bottom on the top. Do you have it? Or you I don't have, have I must have the wrong one of those. So 89075. Oh, Let's, um, Sam, do you have a copy of that? I didn't get a copy of that. So, I mean, I can give you this copy, it just doesn't have the columns across the top. You have to line it up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to I have it. That's fine. Can we make, make uh, two copies, please? And this one has all the couple of Wait a second. I do have it. I'm sorry. I have it. What's that? I have it. Sorry. I was just using the one that I had. I'm all set, Sam. Marion, thank you. No worries. So, the other thing, uh, Mr. Party, uh, is that you know, we, we recommend that the study be done. So, I mean, we can also wait on that at a point in time to make any moves. <laughs> uh, so wait and see. Thank you. And then we look at the study and then, uh, you know, come up with a recommendation. What do we do going forward? I understand the mayor in that thought. I just think that we can't act as if we're not taking action now. So we, there is an action that we're taking now, and that action um, needs to be um, fair and equitable. And you know, based on what was presented as to the justifications for the other increases in pay that we've seen, um, that argument can be made um, for multiple other people's uh, positions. And out of those that came forward, most certainly those arguments can be made. So um, I do agree that we should make this informed decisions based on the market research that we get but if we're going to take an action now mm -hmm. then we should be doing our best to make sure that our actions are as um, fair and equitable and consistent um, based on the people who came forward. Mr. Levin? Yeah, go ahead please. Um, Ms. Brooks, I mean, I understand concerns and um, some, I have similar concerns but when I looked back at what the um, adopted salary was in, in um, 24 for these two positions we were talking about, the director of development and the principal planner, the amount between those two was just a little over $1,000. Mm -hmm. so what we've adopted here, that's increased by like, like three times that. Mm -hmm. So that into, into that part of it, them being close, we've actually increased sure. the amount between the two. So I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that that that's clear. Mm -hmm. So that, and, and that, honestly, I think that it was, um, I want to say it was, no, it was actually there who kind of brought that to our attention last time. It, it, it wasn't, it would be a concern of mine, but initially it wasn't so they brought that. Um, and I, so I was like, that's something obviously we need to pay attention to, but that really only addresses, I, I would say, probably the smaller part of kind of the unintentional, inequitable, and inconsistent practice. But I also think that once the study is out, it, it will address these uh, these differences. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I couldn't find my sheet, but the um, no, no, not that sheet. Um, the uh, principal planner, when um, the the amount of the increase was proposed, and they had done some research themselves, it was anywhere from. Seventy-five thousand to one hundred fifty-two thousand. So I, I mean, you know, who are we? to decide when the study does come in, are they worthy of the 100,000, 120, 152? So again, I, again, I think it's a slippery kind of slope that, that we're on, that we're, mm -hmm. we're going there. And, and as I stated before, nobody you know, references salary levels that are lower than theirs. <laughs> 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 That's what I said. I don't yeah. have that sheet in front of me, but yeah. it's, it's right here. Oh, so it was. Um, yeah. So it was seven, well, it was seventy six thousand five hundred to one hundred and fifty two seven. So yeah, but then the was, average is uh, well, the average, the average, right? But what yeah, I'm yeah, saying take is take into account benefit cap. Absolutely. Absolutely. And general compliance with other aspects of the city code. Thanks. Which is that enough? Yeah, and when the study comes out right. before us, they will address. They will, they will point us directly to what the recommendation. Yes. Yeah. 
And, and as I mentioned before, you know, the deficit we're facing, the increase in taxes, I am not in favor of the, the pay increases, but that's me. Well, let me be specific on that. The city has a residency requirement. These employees was not in compliance with that. It's not in compliance with it now. How do you want me to enforce that? Explain that a little further for She doesn't live in the city. It's required to live in the city. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. She, that, that position doesn't live in the city. Uh, I think there are more than one individual. Right, yes. I know. So, yeah. right. Yeah, I've tried to enforce that. You know, the council, in respects, has looked under that. Go ahead, please. Well, is that the only individual that would be, I, I'm going to just say, is that not the only, that's not the only individual that we're considering raising for the desperate side of the city, and we're aware of that. And, you know, however it happens, so, um, I just want to make sure that when we're considering, we're considering that that is not the only person that, that it applies to. And since we're on that topic, um, the residency board um, should be, you know, reactivate that board. Mm -hmm. the, the board is that board it's not functioning at this point in time, so can we, we need to get that board up and, and mm -hmm. running? And if it's the if challenge has been to find someone who actually, because of the what it consists of, finding someone who really wants to be a member. That's been my challenge, they say that, to be on the board. So that's been the challenge. I think we need to look deeper and just um, get that board up and running and mm -hmm. where the appointment is from you and the mayor. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think, well, you 60 percent of the members are appointed by the city council president. Mm -hmm. It's so the mayor and the corporation council are their designee, and then three members appointed by the city council president. So we know that one council, council member that is um, actually who actually brought it forth, Mr. Borley, thank you, who was willing to be, and the other um, would have to come, they have to be a member of the city staff. So I, I think we need to look at that and get the board up and running. Not a question. Put it on the agenda and let's discuss it uh, at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Try to get the word out here and get members. Okay. That so, mm -hmm. We can address uh, these concerns. So as we're addressing this, we're yes. addressing this in this discussion. So where are we in terms of moving forward with any, any more adjustments? Go ahead, please. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, based on what was recommended, you know, I'm not comfortable with um, the large, very large discrepancy of, you know, the uh, suggested um, percentage of, of raises. I'm, I mean, I'm not there. Um, I'd like to see us move the needle on a little bit. I know that being that I committed to, give me some clarity. Our, no, you can oh, you're just oh. not sure which uh, Oh, okay. Sure, I was just sure, trying to make right. sure that any, you know, So, yeah, I, I think that that's, um, I'd, I'd like to see us get um, closer to some sort of a consistent um, uh, increase. If, we're, if the increase were based on the information that was shared at this table, if there's out other outside factors that wasn't shared on this table, then there's clearly no way that I could make a determination based on that. But based on what was shared here at this table, I'd like to see us be a little more fair and equitable in what we're doing. And, you know, literally three times percentage raise um, for um, some people who came forward or and then some people who, and then one third of that for others. I don't think that's... I, I haven't seen the justification from that being shared here. And I know that there was talks about um, in anticipation um, of, of Mr. Furry's retirement. Um, and I think at that point, you know, then we can, of course, we have to, I think we have to cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't know that we do that now in anticipation for that. And I just feel that I'm, I'm just not there. So I'd like to see us get a little more uh, closer to what was originally asked. What are the councilmen thinking about this position there? Like, be specific to the director of um, development, because that's the one we're focusing on. Oh, there's that, and then there's the principal planner as well, but yeah. I mean, I guess I want to go back to, um, I think we were, 
having an open discussion the other the other night, and I think we were trying to come to some compromises. But I do think also um, looking at it with the yellow highlight on it. Uh, I mean, I think we, we also could look back to what the mayor's proposed was, um, which might be the more, in other words, that was consistent except for the one position. Um, so, I don't know. So, the mayor's proposed was? Right here. Okay, so that was, the percentage was? It's three, well, uh, um, there's three percent except for that one. And what's that one? Which was what actually I was saying the other evening. What you're saying before I decided that I would be happy, I would consider compromising to these. I actually was still sticking with the with that. Okay. Yeah. On that, I would. I'm. I don't even know how that. Yeah. I. I. I, I don't. I. I couldn't get there from three percent for every other position and then fifty one percent. I mean that to me is that's outrageous actually to me. Yeah. Well, what other. Go ahead, please. Sorry. As you were saying, the reason for that is because he was only at 80,000, which was well, well below the position, right? The position was. You know, no, no, that, I completely. That's, 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 what I'm saying. that's why it, it seems like the increase for what happened was well below. Oh, no, that's right. And we're looking forward to if it gets to hire somebody when we leave, when that, that was the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but he was, that position was below, well below, based on what? As was what I'm asking. Okay, out of council. Hold on a second. Out of council. No, he's, he's no. asking him. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because when the mayor did his 3% uh, or 4% uh, prior year, he didn't complain about it. That's why it was well below. Sir, I'm not, I'm, yeah, yeah, my, argue is, my argument is not that it wasn't well below or below or hot. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying, well below based on what? What you determine that? Or what you determine that there of, uh, of what? Uh, Deputy commissioners make, or, or deputy controllers make uh, in this area. I'm talking about even you know, the small cities that, as you see in the paper today, uh, the, the uh, controller from the town of this unit, this unit was hired today at, at uh, I think 142,000. You know, we're talking a place with 12,000 people, a budget, a budget of uh, less than uh, 20 million dollars. You know, mm, right. you know, and we're talking 100. You know, between uh, uh, the general capital. Whatever we're talking over two hundred million dollar budget is based on so one hundred so, 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 and sixty. Yes. No, but I actually put a capital budget in it too. Which is another twenty million. Yeah. So, right. So I'm again, really, really simply, I'm not saying that it wasn't below. I'm saying that if we delve into this, then we have to make the same considerations for other um, positions. So did we look at what the well, surrounding municipalities do for positions that's comparable um, to the other positions because I did, and in fact, in in Albany, there's a, a, the structure is a little different, but it's more of it's almost two positions um, for what for what uh, what we're talking about here. So again, I don't think that the position. Um, is I, I want us to be able to pay people uh, uh, and keep people here. That's exactly what I'm saying. All I'm saying is yes, and we should be able, we should be doing that for everyone who came forward on that same ruler using that same metric. If not, then we have things like a three percent for you and fifty-one percent for you, and that to me is absolutely outrageous. I can't even imagine that. So that's what I'm saying. So now that we move closer. Like to see us move closer. I, and I think that's the reason why I, I, I discussed about doing yes, a study yes, to address these um, these variances. And we're going to get to that, and we're going to address it, and then come back for this discussion at that point in time. I think what we discussed on Friday is that majority of the council, uh, you know, decide to move forward with a compromise because some were asking fifteen percent, some were asking five percent, and then they end up uh, with two being two being eight, one being five, and the four and the three with the small amount. And to leave the um, the <coughs> commission at a hundred thousand, I would recommend because it's market across the uh, we were able to address that when we one of our hearing, and we decided to move forward on that. I would just ask a broad question: Are their support to increase the director of development from what was a 
the recommendation from Friday beyond 8%. Because mm -hmm. we need to move forward with this conversation mm -hmm. and not So I just comment on the statement. I originally proposed 10% and 15%. And as the conversations continued, I think that's when the compromise came. I just very plainly want to not undo the work and extensive conversation we had on Friday. Do I concede to the fact that I accept this is not perfect? And this is us being responsive to the individuals that came before us, um, which I very much stand on is one of our primary principles. Um, however, I can accept that in the future, a better compromise or a better solution for all the city management staff is having this market evaluation. And I think based with that understanding in mind, I can at least speak for myself. Having that information, it'll be prudent upon myself to act on it. And I hope that's where the rest of the council is. I know that as we take into consideration like how that impacts our budget line, again, this is not something we are giving to the city staff. As I said before, it is what they are owed based on their talents and experience. And I think it is our responsibility to make sure that that's reflected in their paychecks. But doing that uh, uh, holistically, rather than as people come and present themselves, I think that's how we fix it. So again, we talk about this a lot. I appreciate everyone's opinions and sentiments. But to your point, we have to move forward. Yes, go ahead, please. And I just want to point out that when we're talking about salaries, uh, there's, you know, everybody's not equal in terms of, because when you look at those salaries, there's entry level, there's mean, there's median, and then there's experience. So when we're talking about that, we have to also take those factors into consideration. Um, so having said that, I'm, I'm comfortable with what we, um, you know, because I took a lot of time to look into this. So I'm comfortable uh, what we came up with on um, Friday. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so, so again, appreciate the work that everyone does for the city. Um, but I thought we were considering the position, not the amount of time that was a position, that someone was in a position, because one of the positions, someone's only been in a few months, does have experience or, or, or a year or something. So, so again, it's a position, not the individual or the time that someone has in that position. So I just, I, I, um, I just want to be clear, that's not, I, I said nothing about time. I'm talking about experience, and I'm not talking about time. Okay. I never said time. So just okay. to be clear, I never said time. Okay. Okay. So if, if we are concerned about the impact to the budget and we're saying that we're going to do a map market, uh, some market research to inform our decisions, wouldn't, wouldn't our best action be to give everybody um, the same 3% across the board until we get that information and then move? Can I just get clarification? So um, when you're saying everyone, everyone, like we're not, we're not pulling anyone out of that. Every single employee gets three percent. And when what we're considering here, we take off the table and not, not consider. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if we're going to do, if we're going to, if 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 what the feedback I'm hearing is from my council members is, hey, let's move forward with what we have and then wait for the market um, research to be done. And I'm saying, okay, if we're going to wait for the market research to be done, then we shouldn't be taking any action that can be um, unfair and inequitable until we get said information. But if we're but if we're going to take an action, and that action is having um, some people getting uh, three times the amount of raise as other people, based on only solely based on what was presented here, um, and what Mr. Ferraro says around the market, then we need to make that same consideration for everyone that came through, or we are absolutely being unfair and inequitable, and I'm not comfortable with that. I would be willing to if we were if if council members were willing to. Um, uh, move the needle to we to us get a little bit further in that direction, which I think would have pretty minimum um, impact uh, to things. And I, I, I just in this in the space of, of of getting through this and making a very huge compromise, I would do that. But as it stands right now, I can't I can't see myself getting there. You guys could do what you want though. Yeah, I think there was a lot of compromise. Right, I didn't have to agree with uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, a lot of compromise there. It was not that something we wanted to do. And uh, you know. We, we can't prolong this. We, we have to come, as I stated Friday, we have to come to a conclusion at some point in time, and the conclusion is this evening. So uh, and I um, respectfully say that we discussed this Friday at length for three hours. If you just want to revisit that position, it doesn't seem that there is going to be any movement here at this point in time. So I says, you know, well, let's stick with what was recommended Friday. Uh, let's move forward, and we'll address that when we do the market study and come back to us and we can make an adjustment to any variance up or down. Okay. 
this. So, so you know, I, 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 we will just stick to what we had in terms of that Friday. And I just want to go through this for a summary in terms of the first recommendation. I think everyone is in agreement with this, the recommendation. The only item I, I ask for is to uh, increase the delinquent um, parking um, violation to either six thousand, eight thousand, so and then put that money back into contingency line. How much do you need? Either sixty to eighty thousand for parking violation and to take that added revenue and place that into contingency line to bring that to upward of three hundred thousand. I think that's doable because when we were discussing the fee increase, they are aggressive approach to, to, to go after the, this revenue. And I think they're doing a good job there in, in you know, market going after working with the agency and they're putting resources behind that. So I don't feel that, um, yes, they have $60,000 in that line. I think we can double, almost double that and we'll achieve it. I just want to remind everyone that we also agree that line 1989-499A, which is the senior center for Yes, that is that is in here as far as okay. recommendation. Uh, it's for the staff. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Forty thousand on Friday. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I did ask. I thought um, to get some totals of how much we've collected so far in the uh, parking. The last one we the numbers that I got from um, Ryan was like thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. The first and couple weeks. When they started, yes, of course. But I wondered uh, how much, oh, you what the, um, what the, the date, date on it was, 30, 60, 90 days, 120 days, you know, what, what this company thinks, how far they're going to get back, and what the anticipation I, might be of, um, you know, dated. I try to recall, I think they were, they were going to get the six months and older or something like that, yes. It, that, that, I mean, yeah. so I'm trying to recall the composition that we had when we were meeting, yes. Right. Oh, so it's about that. And the reason I'm, I'm confident that they, they can do more revenue, but they were very conservative because it's, they're ruling it now. Right. And they were like, okay, we never approach this. We don't know what we're getting ourselves in. But the feedback and the, the response has been what they were looking for. Yes. And they're here. But it's, it's a lot of work they need to get done to, to do it. And I think that well, adding that revenue is not going anywhere. It, it's, sorry, it's adding the revenue and keeping it in contingency line to help with these uh, fires and unforeseen uh, additional expense against the city. That is my recommendation on that. To increase it by? Um, to bring it to 300000 So that will be $80,000 plus. $80,000. Because right now it's 220000 The contingency line. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 the parking funds is so we're bringing it up to 200,000, 20, 240, you're saying, right? No, no, we're bringing the contingency line to 300,000, back to 300,000, okay. and we're adding 80,000 okay. to the parking, delinquent parking. Uh, uh, 20,000 to delinquent parking. 80, 80. It's going from 60, are you going to add 80? You're going to go from 60 to 140? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said what was Mm -hmm. Can you just tell me the line, please? Yeah. Oh, the revenue, line. revenue line? Yeah. yeah. It's a 20, A, 26, 10, M. 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 M like Mary. Because when the okay. adjustment was done against us there, because um, Anthony, has, Anthony took all the money against the police and the fire all the time, and we were like, no, yeah. not so do, don't do that. And then he went and took it out against the uh, contingency. But then they, they, there is, there is, you know, Room to increase the revenue on one line and, and bring it back into the contingency. Okay, so we're, uh, the liquid parking now is going from 60000 to 140000 That's correct. Okay. And your contingency is going uh, to 300000 So it's an in and out. Go ahead. Um, I distinctly remember that you wanted to double it. Yeah, I was looking at the top one here, 240, but then I realized there's another contingency drawdown here. Mm -hmm. So the first one was two hundred and forty thousand balance, but then there was another twenty thousand that came out mm -hmm. to, to reduce it by another twenty thousand. Now we're going to put it back to to three hundred thousand and one four hundred forty thousand. Another four thousand in revenue, yes. Mm -hmm. It's just twenty six hundred. Mm -hmm. Are there any any other discussion on that? Any um. Okay.
Okay. So we did, we did, I did um, do a straw on this, and everybody is it okay, and five in the uh, council members are okay with this. Uh, we'll just go to, um, before we wrap up, we'll go to, um, when we were discussing the public hearing, um, budget for the last May, Mr. Chairman, um, last week when I sent the communication around increasing the youth uh, budget line, I also um, requested that we talk about um, that we uh, fund uh, anti-racism training for city employees. That was in that email. Friday, we neglected to get there. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't go to that. And you wanted to fund that for the city employee or for the police department? Back so, the budget? So, but, so my thought was that it should be funded for city employees, including the police, actually. <clears throat> Go ahead, please. I think that um, what we did, I don't know, was it two years ago? I can't remember, but again, through our MVP, I believe that the HR department was able to bring in some anti-racism training for no cost to all city employees. Wasn't that, remember, I think I you, and I, you and I went to that. I do remember. Um, so I, I guess I would rather see if we could try to do the no cost thing again through HR. Oh, that's what we did, right? Is that you all? Well? That's what we did. We do have programs. Did, did it? Part of it. Hold on, I can't. I, I'm, I'm lost. What did you say? We have other programs that we have for HR department, workplace five, which is one of them. That workplace five. Right. Go through and basically take a little course. Anti-discrimination was one of them. Correct. Okay, anti-racism. Racism, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. I know, so I was saying, um, I agree. We should fund the budget line, and if we have someone to come in and do anti-racism training for free, then let's do that. That's, of course, but in the, no, I don't think that it's something that we can just like hope that we can find for free. I think that we have to prioritize that um, as a you know institutionally. But it was part of the health the health uh, MVP program. Not MVP. No, no, sir. Outside insurance, outside insurance provided, company, yeah. Yeah. and they provided yeah. free of cost. So yeah. why we can tap into that again and see if that's there? Because mm -hmm. if we were to if we were to put a cost to this, what is the cost? So I well I think that um, it was funded on the police line prior, but mm -hmm. but I, so I would say to at least just um, get back get back to where we were, um, and I think that there's a there's a. There might be um, some distinctions that have to be made behind uh, discrimination policies and training and anti-racism um, training. Um, so they might have to make those distinct those distinctions for the council members. Um, I think that especially uh, since um, George Floyd's murder and um, you know things that we that we've witnessed, we've institutions have started to not honor their commitment to be anti-racist because you know there's no longer the social political capital associated with it. And I really want to make sure that the people of the city of Schenectady know that that's not our position. So I would say that we should fund that line. And indeed, if we can find a service to, to do it for free, let's do it. Um, did anyone here at the council go to the anti-racism um, training that as council members? Yes. Um, and it was through our insurance Yes. Yes. Company. I think it was just Council President Porterfield and myself that attended. Is that oh, right, Karen? That's correct. Okay. Oh, because I because mm -hmm. I thought that that training was anti uh, discrimination. Yeah, this one was anti racism. The anti discrimination is definitely different than anti racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we. It was anti racism training that was taken. I don't know if that was the case. Well, but. let me say this. I did look. You uh, worked with Marianne and Booker, and I've only had so many dates. Well, I'm not so. Let's just be clear. Yeah. The, Council. I didn't, I didn't. I did not book that training. No, we, no, we, 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 All right, let's not talk about it, please. Let's, I did please, not book that training. We were looking for trainers outside of that, and we could not get a consensus on council members with a date to attend that training. That is how that happened. And then um, I'm assuming that Mayor gave directive to HR to bring somebody in, and that is what happened. That is correct. Okay. So I did attend the training, and um, I've attended. It multiple trainings <laughs> during that, including one by the police department. And I have to say, uh, that one, in, in my opinion, was left wanting. And I think it needs to be really much more intense. It was very limited time that we spent on it. So um, I don't necessarily recommend, I don't, nope, I'm gonna take it necessarily, I do not recommend that we use that same process. 
I recommend that we use some because the with our insurance companies, like they say they bring somebody in who does it all the time. That was not my takeaway from that training. And so, um, although I went to a training with the police department once, and I was a, it, it was much more intense training. I was up straight down, right down to zone five. I don't know who that who they brought in to do that, but it was a it was very distinct in what they were willing to address and how they were going to address it. And it was also much more interactive, which to me is a better way to have takeaways from training. This training was it's more than the actual interaction, but they really went a lot. However, that one was structured, it was very interactive, and there was a lot more that people took away. And conversations happened amongst the people that were at the training. So the one that the police department did was much better, I can say that. And I'm not talking about this recent one, I'm talking about mm -hmm. one maybe two years ago that they did zone five. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember any other council member going to that one, but you may have called. Yeah, I came for the police one. Um, uh, so I apologize for that. But so if we're going to do it, then then we're going to do it, and we're going to just not do it so that we check the box, say we did do it. We should, if we're going to, we should really invest in it and get an organization or an individual or a company or whatever we're doing who really does it on a regular basis, and we can really derive something from it. That's you know, but. Go ahead. So if I remember correctly, that training that uh, the council president was talking about was actually an implicit bias training, was the language that we used. Um, it wasn't an anti-racism training, um, though they do cover similar topic areas. There's key distinctions, um, the same way that we would say like workplace violence is one training, but mm -hmm. sexual harassment in the workplace is a different mm -hmm. training. Even though the two overlap, there, there are some key distinctions. Um, and, and, and through those conversations, I was strongly suggesting that we look at anti-racism training as, as a council body because our biggest you know duty as a council member is to really is to oversee the allocation of funds and if we're not careful we can start to perpetuate some of those inequities in institutional racism through, through our lens even though that's not our intention we're all capable of doing that so i think especially um in, in light of recent discussions, but that's something that we should really be looking at and, 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 and doing something and making sure that it is exactly that, not something to check a box or something else that will kind of touch on it, but doesn't really deal with it. And so no, to everyone's um, clarification, we have not had any anti-racism training for citizens employees of Schenectady. Besides the police, I was there. Go ahead, please. Besides what? The police, I was there for that. Okay. Uh, so, what is your, in, in terms of all the various trainings, what is your position on DEI training as opposed to anti-racism? So, um, I think that d depending on, you know, we can get, I don't want to get too much into the semantics, but and so just for, not, you know, for d distinction here for people, uh, DEI training, DEI is diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. okay? Diversity, equity, inclusion, diversity is something that exists. We all are diversity is not something that we do, we just are. Everyone's diverse in very multiple ways. Equity is making sure that we're allocating resources to what people's need. Um, and inclusion is just that an inclusive space. Um, Anti-racism training is really looking at the historical um, disparities that have happened in institutions such as a city hall, such, you know, we're not exempt from that um, by any means, even through our best entry. Uh, efforts, myself included, we all can perpetuate some of those um, inequities in racist policy. So that's why there's a clear distinction, and that's why I would say that we need to go under anti racism chain. Okay. If we were to yeah, attach a dollar amount, what are you looking at? Um, I don't, I would have, what was the police's, uh, what was it it's funded at? It wasn't, it's oh, not it's in there. It's not in there. Yeah, I think, because I think they do it like, they don't do it annually. 23 was the first time. Yeah. It's not in here, though. We covered it, Ibel told me, covered it 23 to pay for it in 24. Looking to do it every two years. Yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, um, they see what was told us during this presentation that they were going to do it next year. Um, you know, um, yeah, they, do it. they do it every two years, which is, um, and that's for the police. Right. It's not for all. Okay. I can't find it. But it was. So I it was so. Like if the price hold on, please. Let's let's let's. Okay, I'm sorry. You want to we're speaking, Mr. Brown? No, I was just trying to uh, answer. There's oh. nothing on that line, so that's what I'm. Yeah, yeah so we don't have anything in our budget line to show. Oh, yeah, so, so then we, okay. we need we need to attach a number. It, it was what? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Why would I would? 
It's just that. But to the mayor's point, um, the, you know, hold on. I think the mayor's uh, yeah. Fifty thousand, something like that. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's for hundred and twenty individuals, maybe. Twenty thousand eight hundred was spent this year. That line. Twenty thousand eight hundred. Correct. Twenty. The anti-racism training line. Correct. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Twenty thousand. And that's for the PD. Correct. Twenty. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's just. Do you pay by the person? Is that what? Why are you saying? Mm -hmm. The line is total. I'm assuming it's encumbered. From the previous year. Oh, ah, so, okay, um, that makes more sense. So Twenty-eight thousand eight hundred feet. Year eight gotcha. from uh, for period ending nine. I gotcha. in fact don't have the numbers here, but it's line A three one two zero four zero two C. Yeah, we don't have anything there. Not for twenty-three or twenty, even back to twenty-two. I mean, there's, you know, there's an in-service training line. I mean, maybe, maybe that just got charged to a different line. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But he said it wasn't going to happen in 2025. Right. He said it didn't, uh, I think, January of 2024. Go ahead, please. But, but I, what I hear from Mr. Farley saying is that every other year, he doesn't feel sufficient. Well, we do. So I think like most places, there's um, annual trainings that happen. Um, and sometimes we uh, do, uh, I'm just talking about like other institutions that I've been a part of, we do like um, universal precautions, uh, workplace violence, sexual harassment, those trainings happen annually. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the best practice would be to incorporate that training for our all cities employees annually. And I think that to my knowledge, that would uh, twenty thousand dollars would absolutely cover that. Um, I I wouldn't even suggest that that, that we needed to make uh, such an investment. I would say we could be really safe about doing that or half that. that sounds in twenty twenty three, it was adopted sixty thousand dollars for that line. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. see what I mean? Like how we went like from like oh this is really important to us, and then things trail off. And I, but I will say though to uh, to the to the mayor and and believe. Chief's credit, the training we went to was very good. I think that the police training has to be a little different because it has yes. to be a little more specific. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there is a niche thing there, which it probably needs to happen, where there's a more broader training that for all city employees and, of course, city council members. All right. So if we, if we were to attach it, a number here for 30,000, we something, mm -hmm. 50,000, we need a number so we can move forward. And let's, let's go around the table and ask if we have the support for it. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I think our HR department does do regular trainings for all the city employees. I know they've done sexual harassment. We do a lot of cybersecurity. So I think we need to look overall at the training, the training budget. I mean, it doesn't, and I think that, to Mr. Farley's point, put some money into the police budget separate, maybe, but I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, I think we, I think. You touched on a good point there because, Mayor, those training are mandatory that, that rolls out uh, every yeah, year for all employees. Yeah, we take place in the city. Yeah, so, yeah. so yes, especially uh, sexual, sexual harassment, harassment and workplace yeah. violence. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so those those training are there. Um, employee must complete it. It's not like a choice they have. They must complete it. It's mandatory. So, so, I don't so know let's know put a think. number there. Let's you know Seven. address it and see where we, where we are in terms of support and let's move forward. I'm fine with putting money into it. I would like to put money into it, <laughs> but I just don't know where in the budget it would go. Whether it would go in HR in training or, you see what I'm saying? So I don't really need to make that. I don't need to be a part of that. I mean, it's really an it's an, H, it's an H. It's an HR. It's an, H, it's it's an, an HR. Kind of thing. Yes. 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 Go ahead, please. So in HR line 1430 the insert of training. Is that what currently covers it? It's $15,000. Oh, so there is $15,000 there. Yeah. But maybe that's for other, other training. Yeah, that may be all of the training. But, but again, I think that, and I'm sure that um, the training that we hear but I mean, I know that some of the trainings that they offer through HR are part of what we, I think, hear that training through the city of Boston. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I guess we, we allocated in 2022, I mean, excuse me, 2022 was 1,400, and 2023 it went up to like double. So we'd have to figure out what happened there. And then in 2024, our adopted budget was 15,000 at Homeless Line. Um, do you know what, our, what we paid out so far? 1430406. This is under HR and the service training. 1430406. Yes. Yeah. Each ten of the gold uh, <laughs> of the original budget. So if there's $15,000 uh, currently on that line, budgeted in 2025. Right. And nothing was spent in 2024. Go ahead, please. The service training is, is training for uh, the members and the, and the staff. Mm -hmm. Only? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So nothing's been spent so far on that line. So where's the other training coming from? Go ahead, please. So I'd say a compromise because uh, I think part of the response is just because you can do something doesn't mean you are the best person to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also we look at like comparative advantages versus absolute advantages. So I think if we have this budget line, I do agree that HR would be the best entity to capture this uh, within City Hall, but I think we need to give them the proper tools and resources if we're trying to use a line that hasn't been used previous year. So I think as a compromise, we could look to send them to a training training type course um, or look at segmenting and taking a portion of this money and attributing it to what we're recommending trying to find an in-house or not in-house, like a training Entity with a part of that line of fifteen thousand dollars or two recommendations. Go ahead, please. I don't think fifteen is nearly enough to do that. If we're going to do that, Mr. Farley is saying that fifteen fifteen thousand is just for the staff in HR, and that's it. Excuse me, Mr. Ferrari. Uh -huh. No, you know this was for the fifty nine. That was for the four risk. That was for the four risk for the, the, the groups that we had come here to do the training for us. The what? The, the companies called Flory Risk. They they were they were part of the companies that got, came in and did some of the training for us. For all employees, you mean? For all employees, yeah. Oh, we have, haven't spent the dime yet. Yes, that's because I think it's because of uh, it's an annual cost. Not not even not only that, I think the bills are gonna come up, but uh, the promise too is we have an influx with uh, Mary Ann, oh, excuse me, with uh, Christmas and that oil had the election. Mr. Toro. I'm just saying, I, I, you know, just in the uh, police budget alone, and if we want training for everyone, and that's 28,000 for staff plus police, just say maybe 150 people, and how many employees are there? So, I mean, to, to, to get an appropriate amount on that line, it would have to be, I would think, in excess of $100,000. Just saying. So, then ad nauseum, if you're going to add something to the budget, <laughs> so yeah. then if we're going to put a number on it, which we have to, yeah. where is that number going to come from? Right. And that needs to be the next answer from someone. Go ahead. Okay. So, so I, I would say that if we funded the line uh, previously at 60000 Yeah, so then I, I, I would say that in, in, in my limited scope, I mean, I do know a lot about this in different organizations that do it, but I will say that's limited um, to some degree. I would say that I think that we could accomplish that um, with a budget line of $15,000. I think that you could have two trainings. Um, and yeah. One thought. He's just one talking thought about anti racism. I think. Yeah, we, we can't. Uh, let, let, let him finish, please. But what I'm not understanding, you're saying one five or five zero. Well, I, no, I'm saying one five, but okay. I'm talking about just anti racism. Oh, okay. Yeah. You should be able to add that um, for $15,000. I think that you'll be able to do For the anti racism training, 50000 Yes, sir. And where would you suggest to take that out from general? Would yep. you like to increase revenue or take that out of general? Take it out of general funds. That's what I would say. Go ahead, please. You can also reduce the contingency by 15,000. There you go. Okay, um, you, you, 
So the, the, the mayor weeks. had two emergency that will um, yeah, no, I, this I, week, I last week, I, into this week, 40,000, 45, 43, 45,000, that's 100,000 right there. And the second call is that he calls us to make sure we have enough money to do <laughs> yes. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. So with those emergency demos, are the insurance company reimbursing us at any level? We try and get 100%. Sometimes we're lucky, sometimes we're not. Again, the method I use is, there's all these state rules and stuff. It's the fire chief takes control of the scene. Fire chief takes control of the scene, has absolute control. Any other regulation is put to the side. I do not let the fire chief release the scene until the building is demolished. Mm -hmm. And nobody's challenged that. They come in and talk about asbestos and mm -hmm. contamination and other things. And those things are all good. Mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna let the building sit there for years. And that's what happens in other communities. So that costs more money. Because so I have to have firefighters which staff that scene a time and a half. This last one, uh, which is still being evaluated, we also treat it as a potential crime scene. So police officers also staff it. So that becomes time and a half. So you can run up several thousand dollars very easily there, and some of those costs we don't get reimbursed for, even though we try and get reimbursed. Well, also to, I mean, if they have insurance on if the they building, have insurance. If they don't have insurance on the building. Yeah, sometimes they don't have insurance, or the building is underinsured. Yes, so it's uh, the city is at, at risk all, almost all the time. <laughs> Somebody, go ahead. Yeah, I would just caution us not to, even though I don't, I don't think that's the intention here, that I don't, we don't want to frame it um, for the larger public that it's, you know, anti-racism training or, uh, you know, supplying our, our contingency fund. That's not, I don't want to, to have, a, to right. think that there's a false choice here. Thank it's you, not Mr. Mayor. Of contingency. Appreciate you, Mr. So, Mayor. Thank you for that. So 15,000 15, is being recommended by Mr. Farley to, uh, to the anti-racism training. Go ahead. Before we do that, I'd like to make a point. I'd like to ask questions as well. I mean, when you say 15,000, is this for the entire city, including police, fire, and every city employee? So no, I believe that the police already have um, money in their budget to do that. They do it no. every other year. Right, or they every don't. Year. They don't yeah, so you won't do it. You won't get anything in 25. 25. 25 budget. We're doing a 24, we'll do a 25, then a 26 we will. Right. And the reality with that is just there are some training that has to occur every year, and then there's some that is done on a uh, longer time span, and this seems to be one of those that fits in so that we can you know, balance the amount of time that we have them out of service or paying them overtime to do training. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would again, I witnessed the training on um, the one time and it was a very good training. I, you know, I definitely could tell that it was vetted. What I'm saying is that um, their training is specific to, to the police. Um, mm -hmm. And I think so. Now, and, and it does need to be. So I'm not saying to really necessarily change anything as far as what they have going on. I'm saying that if we put fifteen thousand dollars in the budget, we could offer. Um, I'm sure that we could find a vendor to offer those trainings. Um, maybe two trainings um, and or maybe two or three trainings for that number and then obviously police and fire and everyone city employees will be welcome to uh, attend uh, said trainings but I think that that that'd be a place to start and again we're not going you know we're not in a position to operate off our wish list I just think that this is something that's that should be a priority it's part of our express values and what we have expressed to the public um, I think that we need to honor that <laughs> I apologize I don't know what we do, like an OGS, so like with office staff here, you can schedule, okay, you're gonna come in here for uh, a day, for four hours, whatever it is, with in the waste collection, I still have to do the full day's work. Mm -hmm. So we have to, and I'm not quite sure how we do some of that, to budget mm -hmm. some of those trains they've done online, just different mm -hmm. things for, and that's work for safety, some of the equipment that can uh, do it. But that would actually have a bigger impact in terms of the budget where we have to pay you know, everybody overtime mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do the training. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so so there is fifteen thousand other against us. So uh, I mean, against us flying anti-racism training, fifteen thousand are being suggested. Do we have um, supporters? Yes. You, yes. Yeah. So that before I answer, do we incorporate that reduction in uh, line A nineteen eighty nine four nine nine A the senior center program because we could just attribute fifteen thousand dollars from that. No, we already took that already. We brought it up to forty thousand. Right. Wait, was it already incorporated into the budget? Because I know we kind of mm -hmm. spent it out on Friday. Yeah, that was not adjusted. Right. Right. There is money. Now look at that. Right. No, that came out of a uh, that came out of contingency. There, there was no money oh. for senior programs. So it's three hundred thousand contingency, sixty thousand to party, and then at the bottom of the page, they took another twenty thousand, bring it to two party. So that's why I suggest to to up that up back to three hundred thousand. So we do not have a you don't have to come out from general mm -hmm. reserve. So if we were willing to spend it on contingency for the senior center, can't we just spend on contingency for this very important train? Great. So we were willing to do that. I thought that's what we were doing. Yeah. Hmm. I don't have an objection on that. 15,000 out of that, I yeah. will make it 35. 35. Still positive. Yes. Mm -hmm. The opera buddy. I know I sound like a broken record yeah. on the opera buddy, but I don't, don't have any. $846? No, I mean when we take some money back. Yeah. All right. What is, what is the support for this? <laughs> I like support. Support, support. Yeah. Support, yeah. support. Okay. Just That's so you know, it. I would support that 20, but. Yeah. 15,000. Uh, I support that 20. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Last night, I just want to summarize this, and then we'll have yes. to move this out to committee and have the uh, time to clear it out so we have on this, we are on the same page of the recommended changes. Last when we were um, discussing uh, raises, and I. Oh. Was discussing with the mayor why no why the mayor didn't put in any raises and then there are certain regulation in terms of that and then our final transition is that the mayor would like to see um, what is in the in the law of the city charter or ordinance and I asked Ms. Barrage to look at how do we can you know, how come up with a recommendation on how do we proceed in terms of the mayor raise and what's in the city charter. And I know um, you submit some documents to us last Friday and today. Would you like to kind of walk us through as to where we are and what, what we need to do? So, let me Sorry. just make sure we're clear what my position is. I came in here, the mayor had uh, difficult financial times. First cycle, didn't ask for anything. And my uh, compensation is still probably $35,000, $40,000 less than my predecessor. Uh, the overall package, uh, going back full five years ago, what the charter says is that the mayor will be given pay raises equal to other management employees. I had that number calculated, I figured it was 14,000 or 16,000. The council rejected that and gave me 4% raise. This cycle, I didn't put anything in because the law is quite clear. You're a talented group here. You've gone over every line. <laughs> Nothing's been left unchallenged or unanalyzed. And so last year you gave every management employee a raise except me. Uh, so I can take a hint on that. And really what I'm looking to do is you can't give pay raises during the term. And I got to clear it up for other individuals who be sitting in this seat. And so I'm really looking to litigate it. I would like it to be so that the members of the council are liable for that that wasn't paid to me. But it will make sure that in future councils and mayors, people are going to live up to what the code is and the charter. If you don't like that, you have the ability to change it. You haven't done that. And so, you know, I'm open to discussions, but I'm generally not happy with the way the council's proceeded on that. The other question is that can an elected official with the salary within their term? Salary increase. Salary increase. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. <laughs> and I think that was part of one of the, uh, the, the documents that it says that uh, elected officials are not supposed to receive salary increase within a term. So how do we go about if we were to get that management raise? 
to an individual? How would that the apply? Four positions were raised as of January 1st of this year, and three remain at the lower level because you're in the mid portion of your term. The power to fix and determine salaries, compensation and benefits of all city employees, officers, the city council shall determine and establish maybe that great one, the annual budget. Uh, it's just you can't get that's the space right? Yeah, we can look at that. No, no. Pay raise in the middle of the term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there's a section all the way down to the page. Uh, or four. Four. four, yes. Um, section F. Oops. I'm going to ask um, no, Mr. Raj to kind of let our Ms. O'Brien to kind of explain this in terms of uh, you're, you're saying that okay, you can receive a salary increase between your term, but then this part here. Wow. What the position is I've taken is the Salary should be adjusted every four years. Every four years, right. Um, so when my term was up before, I put in for a raise. The council rejected that. And this time, a year ago, I didn't put anything in because I know the council so uh, detailed in their analysis that they would do what is fair and equitable and live up to the charter, but you didn't. Just, just uh, for you know, regarding the, a little bit of the charter his, history, yeah. the references that are being made here, mm -hmm. as far as the, the the strong mayor law came into onto a referendum in seventy eight, and that was the strong mayor uh, referendum, and in that. And you've been given copies of this. This is section 90 of the, on page 352 of the, the code of the uh, minutes. It says the administrative and executive powers. The administrative and executive powers of the city, including the power of appointment of officers and employees, are vested in the elected mayor with executive powers. He shall receive such compensation and be fixed by, by the council, by ordinance, or by law. So that's was approved by the voters back back in the, back in the day in 78. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then in the following year, the city council passed a local law and it said, it said um, local law number four is, is, is amended, okay? As amended, the section 90, as amended by number four, at the base salary, yeah. the, we're talking about the base salary. Mm -hmm. So in 78, mm -hmm. The city council, the, 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 what goes to before the voters is saying the compensation is going to be set by the city council for the mayor. The following year, in 1979, the council passes a, 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 a local law that says the base salary for the mayor is set at 26100 a year beginning January 1, 1980. Okay, so it's set a, set a base. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say any salary adjustment granted from time to time to appointed officers and employees not covered by a collective bargaining agreement is to apply to the salary of the mayor. Mm -hmm. So if that's, if you read the two together, this, the council sets the, in the first year, they, they, they set, the, the, set the salary. Mm -hmm. And then the second year, they pass a local law that says, here's the base, and from time to time, when, you're, when there are adjustments to other management employees, the, man, the, the mayor will get adjustments. So it, it makes sense. It's saying the salary, if, if you're giving raises to other employees, management employees, mm -hmm. then by operation of that local law, that should, would apply to the mayor as well. So it's anticipating that um, you know, from time to time, appointed officers not covered by the collective is to apply to the salary. So, it anticipates that from time to time that may be in somebody's term. It, you know, it may be in somebody's term. So, because it has carved that out, saying that how that can be done. So you can make the argument that it can be done from time to time. And the idea was, I think, that there's the base, 
from time to time that salary will go up as management people get them. So that was the base from which we started. Now, over the years, has that happened? No. No. And so that that's where you know that's where we are. And that that normal progression. Yeah, but there, there hasn't been that normal progression that, that if you look at okay, if you're giving management employees a three percent raise, just throwing the number out. Um, if the mayor would get a three percent raise. <laughs> the management is getting a five percent. Then management of confidential employees would that would include the mayor. Um, but that apparently you know has not been done. It's been the salary has been radically increased over the years. But you know, going back to the, that time period, you read the two set those two local laws together and you get you get it. And it, it's the reason why I, I'm, I'm bringing it up for discussion and we need to address it and um, you know we need to find a pathway to address this and uh, so this can continue to happen. Go ahead please. But, but I think it's important to address the comment of the mayors and speaking to like the morality or the like efficacy of our decisions. I can only speak for myself. I know through countless professional and personal experiences, it's always said, do not assume. Um, I know coming into the city council, uh, I'm in my third year. Under, under my understanding as a legislator within the city, it is my responsibility to present my opinions in a fair and objective manner consistently. I would say it is the expectation for myself onto the Corporation Council to let me know if I can or can't do what I'm recommending. And I would say based on that understanding, we work collaboratively to make sure that we are supporting the residents of our community. I would say if at any point in time we weren't doing that or can, or proceeding in a consistent manner, I would think it would be, and I'm not pointing at you, Ms. Brooks, and you <laughs> recently joined us, or you, Mr. O'Brien, I would say if we are doing something or acting out of good conscience, I can already hear Mr. Farley's comment of two things can be right. So two things can be true. Or two things can be true. Sorry, sorry, Get sorry. Uh, I've been saying it more recently from my employer. It's give each other grace. And I think as we're having this conversation right now, I can uh, say that I haven't looked at the stagnancy with a raised eyebrow as I see other salary lines increasing. Um, however, taking the mayor's proposed budget as the mayor's proposed budget, I looked at it as, as it was presented. So as it's been informed to us that this is an issue that we need to correct, let's continue this conversation. So back to the Corporation Council, what do we need to do or what recommendation do we need to advise uh, this council that we move in the right direction? You can provide the mayor of the race. That's what I, I asked for it. Three percent that most. Yeah, that's what that's what the general across the yeah, three percent. I don't want to go ahead and then. So I just want to be clear, Mayor. Are you saying that the prior mayor made more than you? Compensation was more. I, I don't take the retirement. Don't take the health care. Sold the mayor's car. Uh, pay for my own cell phone. Don't incur any of those other expenses that my predecessors had. Miss um, Patrick. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, because um, I don't think that we've given the mayor a raise since I've been on council. A couple of years ago, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Four years, five years, yeah, for that. Right, right. right. that, yeah. So it's probably not since I've yes. been on council. And it, 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 it was. I forgot what year it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 19. 19 what? 2019. Oh, oh, yeah, but it's a bit like 1998, okay. So. Yeah. so Yeah. Yeah. So oh. What do we need to do? At three percent, but does that, does that mean that the mayor come January first he's entitled to the three percent? Or that's that's oh. not that's not true. The level of equity that yeah, that intent in the yeah. code sets. <laughs> it's the position cannot get a raise midterm. Yeah. Oh well, that that that's. Because that's it's a it's a conflict in 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 the, in, the, in the law and the code, but mm -hmm. there's com there's there's so, a, so my AG uh, uh, comptroller's opinion for some, that that we haven't taken a deep dive, and this is just something we've taken a look at. So, in which this sort of this sort of uh, automatic pay raise, if you will, pursuant to the local law, 
is, is okay, even though it's in the middle of the term. So, because it, but we have to look at in detail that, that opinion. Because it is anticipating that if you read, if you're reading the, that, in you know, the four corners of that local law, it anticipates that during the course of some of these terms, it's going to be going up. Yes. So, if there's, you know, a, a, a comptroller's opinion, and they're not recent comptroller's opinions, that you have to take a look at. But, um, I thought some of those were based on, we'll use the example of, like, longevity. So that every city employee gets a bonus at five years, ten years, if that is in the normal salary structure and the mayor is in ten years. So you yeah. get that. And it happens to be in midterm, it's applicable. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand how how can we move forward in terms of addressing all that um, apply the Salary increase, and uh, the mayor is um, entitled to a January force based on the that recommendation there. That's only applied to the mayor, but not any other elected official. Is that right. there, there's, there's also you know, the municipal home rule law, you know, section 24, that says that you can do a, a pay raise you know, for, uh, I think that was last year, the council members got a pay raise. But the, the pay raise wasn't effective until 45 days after the period that somebody could submit a, 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 per, a petition, which is referred to as a permissive referendum. In other words, somebody, somebody would have to go out and collect signatures, or a group of people would have to go out and collect a, group, a bunch of signatures uh, to satisfy the requirements. The challenge that, that, to, that, that was not what was used last year as pay raise it took effect at the beginning of their new term. That's the other thing, the municipal home rule law, section 24, deals with municipal referendums and somebody's getting a, a pay increase in the middle of their time. But can we address that by amending the, the city um, charter? So, so would, that, would that be a recommendation from the law department to address that? Uh, so go forward, to going forward every year, just not have to be you know, pile up and wait four years, or does it happen every January 1st? Or then, Elected city council member in the future. It's up to the council. It's up to the council to, to, to push that amendment. Okay, go ahead, please. So, I, it's kind of awkward, I guess, to ask somebody if their boss deserves a raise. So, but I guess so. If we're, I'm wondering, like, what we would, what metric we would use because, like, again, like, so we have some people that are getting five percent, other people are getting twenty-five percent. Um, and some of that justification was the, uh, as long as somebody worked here. But then, but that, the, to the mayor's point, I believe that the long, longevity is already built into a person uh, to management's. Yes. Is it not to all management employees except the mayor? Oh, okay. So that's probably that's what I mean. That's probably something that we should approach. Some people said that if it does apply to the mayor, just never take it because it doesn't doesn't just specifically exclude the mayor. Okay, so that's what we got um, Friday. That's what that was a factor when we were talking about the principal planner position. We were saying around um, uh, for years of service, but it seems like longevity is already calculated in that. So that's just another thing that we have to. Well, the longevity is carried in a separate line. Separate line. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. In their budget. Okay. In their budget. So, uh, are, are there, well, do, I asked Mayor, do you have questions. any idea what other mayors in the area make? And not enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting oh, oh. to the right, do you have any ideas of the mayor of Albany makes, Troy? Uh, I'm last week. I'll tell you in a second, I bet. <laughs> mayor of Albany does make more. What will be a recommendation from the law department and how do we move forward with some legal aspect? Um, our recommendation would be uh, to look back at the last time the mayor had a raise. Um, the finance department would have to do that and look at the amount that 
management was increased each year since then. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that number and see what it comes to. It's going retroactive. Yeah. Yeah. One at a time. Yeah, please. No, no, no. You, you ask the question would, it, would you get a raise every fourth year of his election or every year? Every fourth year. Every fourth year. So, so it would be the fourth year if we got 4%. He would, like, say for, for four years, it's four, 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 four. Yes. He would get 16%. <laughs> yes. He okay. would get 16%. Oh, uh, okay. And that's now, what I put in for five years ago. The council rejected it. The number was considered to be too big, even though you've given it to everybody else. Okay. So that would be the recommendation. Yeah, the recommendation. Yeah, what the law so, so yeah. Anthony, is it possible that you can uh, or Derek work on that number yeah, for yeah. us and come back to us? Yeah, can do the research. We're gonna need it tonight. From 2019. Yes. Was that the last? What was the last raise that? 2019. 2019. Okay. My position would be that that was inadequate. It didn't comply. How far back can I be about? 2019. Would that be a recommendation of 2019 all the way to 2024? So the mayor saying that that's, he doesn't feel that's sufficient. Even every four, if we went every four years at whatever percentage, I think it was mostly four during those years for the management. But you're saying, um, based on the last, the last increase, increase was not adequate. You feel like that would not be adequate. Correct. And I'm really looking going forward. If the council can convince me of some way that's going to ensure who's ever sitting on the council and sitting in this position that it will be addressed. And yeah. These numbers will just go mm -hmm. away. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm kind of asking if we can just go back and just do a calculation from 2019 to 2024 and let's come up with a number and then bring it for discussion and move forward. It's not, you know, thank you. I look forward how it can be addressed. I mean, if we can if we go back to the last increase in 2000, yes, you know, they were back and forth on the council. I can remember that, you know, it was, it was a challenge. To, to get uh, members to approve it, and it was not easy at that time in 2019. Go ahead. So there, it's my understanding that sometimes, like um, some some management positions, there'll be uh, raise like raises will be built in on different lines sometimes, and like it might not be as apparent when you're looking at it. Like so, someone can be manager here, and then like their raise could be a percentage. Um, and then it could be like a 0.5 over here in a different space. Is that is that true? We're talking about certain positions. Uh, we told you yes, possibly you're talking about maybe mm -hmm. charge on different mm -hmm. funds. I'm not going to get into any of that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just asking for clarity for myself. You know, I know. It has to be there so it's clear. In the public. Okay. Yeah, I know, but I'm asking Derek a question, though, so I can, so I can make an informed decision. Like, so could you give me like an example of like, like, the police commission is charged out of police and fire, so there's two lines. All the fund is charged out of water, sewer, and general operating funds. So sometimes we've done that based on the workload. Don't we do that with Masons too? Like during the summer? The Masons, they, they get more money as part of the contract. During the summer? Yeah. It comes out of a different fund, so it's, it's matching up with the actual work that is that they're doing. Okay, so so it wouldn't be like a manager could like we say, okay, everyone gets a, a three percent raise. Um, that would be a three percent of their total. Uh, of, so it's not like a three percent raise in this line or anything added in another line. No. That couldn't be the case, right? No. No. Okay. So go ahead, please. I was going to say, for the sake of asking, the mayor said that the current rate was inadequate to save some time and additional work. Do you have an adequate number, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor? I haven't calculated, but we did the calculations up to 19. That was, I put that in the budget and the council rejected it. I wasn't a member of that budget, but you have the number yeah, that. So, so, so here the recommendation is to go and just go and, and make a recommendation. Finance can pull that. Yes. Yeah. But let's look at 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and come up with a number and then we'll move forward and move this budget out tonight. It, it's going to happen tonight. Uh, I'm Sorry. Right. I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm confused because I thought the mayor said every four years. Not every but year. we have to address all, all these years that was not accounted for. Yeah. So yes, and then we need to move forward whatever that number is. Right. So you're saying when it comes to every the fourth year, mayor, 
that you're, the, the, the three years that preceded it, they should be calculated into the year? Correct. Is that what you're saying? That was your Okay. I just want to make sure. Question, Chair. Oh, where, where would that money come from? Huh? What, what, where would that money come from? Do you have any suggestions, Chair, on where that money would come from? General, General Reserve, where salary, uh, salary line, that money come out of trade for salary. Will it come from salary? Come, comes out. Wait, General we'll Reserve. Oh, I will we'll take care of that. Yes, from balance. Sure. Sorry, excuse me. So, can we get those numbers, please? Okay, let me start right now. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Wait, so from 2019. So we're saying that comes out of the fund balance? Yes. Oh, so now y'all all right with taking money at the fund balance again? Okay. All right, y'all. What's going on here? No, we asked you I where would you like the money to come out. Right. Right. No, I'm asking where it's supposed to come from. Suggestion from the court, and we'll take it out of the contingency, and nobody has any objection uh, about that. Yeah, we're all right. All right. So, uh, okay. I think it's because we're you. correcting an inequity that has happened.
Try to save trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, okay, well, I don't need it. Sean, you have one? No, I don't. Sean needs it. All right, well, well then you're going to need to go through with it, and then I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, you sure. go through this. Yes. You can actually hear it. Oh, no. Are you going to make another copy? Okay, you good? I remember my kids <laughs> 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 So you just want to highlight that? I don't know. I know which part. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Let's, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do with expenses first. The first uh, is the city clerk uh, salary, uh, which uh, the mayor's proposed budget is 83235. Uh, we raised uh, the fee by uh, $4,041, and then again, we added the $5,000 for the registrar, and it brings her up to 92276 uh, the deputy registrar uh, is because she's not because the city clerk is doing the registrar is going to be reduced by five thousand to four forty seven four sixty two, and uh, the stipend which was eight thousand in the mayor's budget is, is going to be reduced to three thousand, which is uh, for the uh, city clerk. Our senior uh, center program ARPA is going to be increased uh, by forty thousand as we requested. Uh, we have the out of grade uh, uh, for MOA with the CSEA for eight thousand three forty eight. Uh, what was the uh, Maxine? That's for uh, your, your record record access. Access. Yeah, and with the record access person. Right. Okay. Now, now we increased the, uh, the public safety foundation from five thousand to twenty five thousand. So that's the other twenty five twenty thousand. We are adding in the anti racism. <laughs> Racism training from uh, zero to fifteen thousand, uh, and then we have the uh, uh, development raises. We have the director of development going up to four thousand two seventy two to ninety two two eighty one. The zoning officer is going up six fifty seven to sixty seven thousand five hundred. We have the principal planner uh, going up uh, sixteen ninety seven to eighty nine seventy five. And on the back of the same page, we have the home coordinator. Going from uh, 69, 21 to 70,000. Uh, we have the uh, deputy commissioner, which was in the uh, mayor's budget at 128,003 to 100,000, so that reduces by uh, 20,803. And then uh, we have the mayor's salary going from 1,568 to 118,849. How do we get those, uh, right? And uh, how do we get that? We're, uh, we're reducing, we're uh, increasing the, the weekly parking fines by 80,000, and at the same time, uh, we're also reducing the appropriated fund balance by 1,600. Oh, nice. So, you know, we're still, which is good. You know? Yes. And that equals the 78,324 equals the 78,324. Hmm. Uh, you want to go to water? Or? Yes, go ahead and complete. The, yes. wa the water, uh, what we did, we took, uh, there's not going to be any rental of that property because of the shape the building's in, so we, we just uh, subtract the 5000 out of revenue, and we took that 5000 out of uh, expenses of uh, light power and gas, so it's minus 5, minus 5 on each side. And the last but not least is uh, capital projects. Uh, which reduces the borrowing by 205000 as you can see. <coughs> what is this? This, uh, 
But we added that and we took it from, we just added it into projected money from delinquent parking? Correct. But I thought we just added to delinquent parking prior to this. Didn't we do that to add? 80,000 we added. No, no, no. It was 60, we added 80. Okay, so. That's a revenue and we, we mm -hmm. offset it by the expenses. Okay, right. So what I'm saying is that Friday, I think uh, Mr. Mutavarian was suggesting that we increase delinquent parking. Correct. Which we did. No, 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 right. But we increased it how much? 80,000. 80. No, that's all together. That's including tonight. No, 60 plus 80, 140. Okay. okay. So, no, just tonight we just increased it. We discussed it and actually you said 60 on Friday and then it's 80 today. So, we didn't do it on Friday. We discussed it and mm -hmm. I don't believe it's reflected here. Oh, okay. It's so not the 60 because right. this is what we have to now. Mm -hmm. So is that all the money that we think that we can get out of the link department? Because if there's more money over there, then could we just, if it seems like it's the, that's the money pot, but so. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a good number for the first year. It will be, you know. push it, you know. Now we're really trying to get them going, you know. Mm -hmm. We're contacting the company almost every day. No, yeah, no, I'm saying it's just, seems kind of, mm -hmm. all right. So, how much of the projected I'm just additional revenue trust the process. Of the projected increase in, um, you know, so you've used the, yes, they used everything. Yeah. Oh, okay, and, and I And I used the difference, I reduced our appropriated fund balance. I mean, you, the use of it, instead of using, you know, uh, you know, Five million four sixty five. We're going to use five million four sixty three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Seeing none, so I'm going to ask for the movie motion for a budget ordinance for 2025. Can I just make a statement oh. before we do that, please? It's not a question, but it's a statement. Go ahead. So I just, first of all, I want to say thank you everyone for this process. I, there was a very, is this thus far has been a lot smoother and been managed a lot better than um, uh, last year's experience. So I want to thank all the council members for that, um, including our chair. I think that uh, you handled this uh, well this year. Um, but with that, I just want to say that me personally, due to the fact that, you know, I didn't get the, not, the unanimous um, commitment from the council, from some members I did, but not unanimous commitment to increase that youth uh, line via ARPA. And I think that there's some some inequitable um, <clears throat> formulas on that we're getting to where we're at. I, that's, I, I can't support the budget. And that's my position. Quite frankly, I don't think the mayor's going to either, but that's just my guess. So, but I do think that the process was done in good faith and I appreciate you guys' time for doing that. 
just was on a previous voting of the finance committee. No, I understand that. I know that. I know. I know the process. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. So, no, the motion uh, for the budget ordinance for 2025 operating and capital budget as amended. Motion is on the floor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Any other business before finance? Mr. Chairman, just for, for the council members, we will gun, we'll get a draft ordinance mm -hmm. to you uh, by no later than Thursday, so you can look at it Thursday mm -hmm. at the latest, Wednesday hopefully, and we'll be working a lot of our work with the finance department to go through the numbers and and, and you know, look at the numbers and put them into the ordinance. And as you know, the, uh, the amendments will be attached to the proposed budget, and that's all part of the ordinance that will go on the uh, before you next Monday. Mm -hmm. So that's just some housekeeping way ahead for you all. So thank you. Oh, Mr. Mayor, should we do a straw poll to see because it, <coughs> yeah. because if it's not going to pass. Maybe we should be having meetings. Yeah. I, I think we, we did that Friday. I mean, uh, oh, okay. We did that Friday. Okay. We can do it back again. Uh, no, okay. We, we can do it back before no. we close. Okay. Oh? Excellent. Okay. No, we don't need to do it again. That's my now. <laughs> I think we're. Okay. Any other business for finance? It's a, it's a final motion to. Uh, so move. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. What rest? Oh, these go.